So, okay, uh, I am reusing a lightning talk that I actually wanted to do somewhere else at the Ubuntu conference. Um, and it's about making my job super vicious. And um, first, I have to warn you, I have no idea what I'm talking about and what I'm doing. So, um, uh, I don't know, for example, much about butter affairs and stuff like that. But um, uh, I'm a big fan of Git, so um, I try to use it or have some, some thoughts and uh, um, um, a proof of concept on how to use it for packaging. So um, the old way to do everything is everything is a file. Uh, so when you install something, you put a lot of files on the system and then you have a new thing there. But well, it turned out that everything was changing rather quickly because not everyone is seeing the same file uh, file system tree, which is, for example, with th things like Docker and stuff, you can actually have things that only some some parts of your system see. The other thing is we have Git, which uh, is awesome and has versioning and uh, is a content addressable file system. And the cool thing about that is that every object in the file system actually has has the hash and that identifies it uniquely. Um, you can abuse Git quite easily. We did that with Bibersect and the GNOME guys did that with OS3 where they put essentially the whole operating system in a uh, binary repository. And uh, yeah, actually one might uh, consider doing that for packages too, to have uh, deliver packages like that. And one reason for that is with Git you have atomic updates because right now packaging looks like that. You put the batteries out and you fall on the new package and you really hope that everything goes fine and then looks like these get on the right side. This is how you hope it works. But sometimes stuff like that happens and then you really want to, <laughs> then you really want to uh, have um, the ability to go back atomically and have everything like you had it before. So, um, the other thing, that's the one thing you want with atomic updates. The other thing is uh, this, and all the web applications are doing that. So, everyone has that in, in the web world, so that you just update stuff on the fly. But I wondered, why should that really be restricted to, to uh, web applications? Maybe you can do that on the desktop too. So uh, I did a proof of concept, and it's really slow, but it works. And uh, I, what I did is I created a FuseFS thing in uh, Python. So yeah, it's slow. And what it does is it checks out, um, or you can run, you can mount a Bibersect repository. So you can mount a Git repository with LibreOffice builds. And then you can say, okay, I want to have this build, and you can start it from there. And what happens is that um, whenever you open a file, it actually, while, when, only when you are opening it, it creates the file locally in a cache, and then gives you a handle to that. So with that, you can um, essentially have on-the-fly updates in the background, because you can push new things into this repository without ever changing the file system state. Um, and the first, uh, I also tried to have two, two builds doing the same thing uh, as to two, uh, two Libre offices running on the same file system, but that really doesn't work because the dynamic, dynamic linker really gets confused when there are two different libraries with the same file name around at the same time. So I had to do a little bit of... So uh, I skipped the demo because I have no time left, but uh, yeah, I've, it's only like uh, a 300 line Python thing. So yeah, that's, that's uh, how I would love uh, us to maybe do packaging at some point in time, and not in the old way, falling backwards on the batteries. Okay, thank you.